Great. So I'm going to speak here about accelerating commercial dissemination of real-world neuroimaging technologies. And my name is Tim Mullen. I'm CEO and Research Director at Intheon, um, which is a, a neurotechnology platform company uh, operating um, in this, uh, this domain that I'm going to speak about. So what I'm showing in this example here is Intheon's avatar experience. And this is a unity fly-through of your own brain and body activity with real-time EEG brain mapping and physiological monitoring, as well as closed-loop neurofeedback and BCI. And you can plug it into commercial EEG hardware and navigate to a part of your brain and observe inferred brain activity in real time. So this is an example of one type of sort of wearable neuroimaging. And there's other examples also emerging of commercial applications of non-invasive neuroimaging tech, and some of those I've shown here. And this includes uh, biomarker discovery and clinical diagnostics for neuropathologies, mental health issues, developmental disorders. Assistive neurotech provides an alternative pathway for individuals to communicate or to gain motor or uh, cognitive abilities. And over 6 million patients in the U.S. alone could benefit from such a, such a system as this. Um, similar tech to this can be used by healthy individuals in daily life, either as an augmentative tool to accelerate learning or to improve cognitive performance or promote well-being or increase safety. And we're seeing numerous emerging applications uh, in quantified self-health and wellness sectors uh, using uh, brain function tracking to gain insights into factors that can influence uh, our cognitive or and brain health, sort of a Fitbit for the mind. Neuroimaging tech is also being used to restore or enhance neural function through neurofeedback or targeted neuromod. So, for instance, in this example, real-time neurofeedback of motor-related activity is being used for rehabilitation, or this is a demonstration of that type of capability. Or it can also be used for real-time mapping of brain responses to neurostimulation, um, to guide stimulation. And finally, similar tech is being used to create transformative experiences, new forms of entertainment, art. But there are barriers to timely commercial and clinical translation of neurotech, including time and cost to perform R&D and to hire teams with suitable domain expertise, establishing validity of a solution within the real world application domain. Uh, accessing suitable sensor hardware and data, and being able to iterate and fail quickly, test hypotheses in real-world contexts, and basically establish product market fit uh, as early as possible. Jeffrey Moore, uh, he famously wrote about crossing the chasm uh, between product ideation and mainstream adoption. And in the neurotech domain, we also see a chasm between basic science and R&D and industry and clinical applications, user adoption and market growth. And on the one side, we have labs that have expertise in basic and applied research, experimental design, data collection, algorithms and methods development and such. And on the other side, we have industry teams with expertise in product ideation and design, scalable engineering, marketing, et cetera. And in academic settings, development usually progresses methodically in constrained lab settings intended to yield maximum scientific knowledge, whereas industry is interested primarily in getting a product to perform suitably well for its intended application, often in complex, unpredictable environments. So in order to increase dissemination, we need to not just cross this chasm, but really to close it, bringing these two worlds together so that product teams could easily build on state-of-the-art and scientific R&D, uh, labs could conduct research in real-world contexts. In doing this, we also need to understand how value is created for each group and recognize that entrepreneurs face different pressures than scientists. So for instance, a lab may need to produce high impact publications to sustain funding, whereas a startup needs to increase user adoption and get to market as quickly as possible before seed funding runs out essentially. A means that I think uh, will help achieve broad dissemination is access. Accessibility, clinical utility, consumer utility, ethical frameworks, standardization and sales. And this basically means accessibility through industry-oriented neuroimaging hardware, software, and data platforms, clinical utility by thinking carefully about patient needs and their desires, and having streamlined, clear regulatory processes that adapt to the pace of emerging technology, consumer utility, identifying killer apps and thinking carefully about ergonomics and user experience design, and also having strong ethical frameworks that are implementable in practice within the foundation of a business or product 
and that align incentives and needs across multiple different stakeholders from end users to investors to business leaders. Also establishing industry standards for interoperating with hardware, software, and data and standardizing terminology. And then finally, involving sales and marketing at early stages of R&D and product dev to help ensure that the end result has good product market fit. Here I've listed a representative sample of consumer neurotech companies across eight sectors, most of whom could leverage or contribute to advances in neuroimaging tech. And there's many more than this. And I've also disclosed here, um, I've listed, sorry, disclosed uh, financing for some of these plus other neurotech companies. And around 10 of these have raised more than 100 mil each. And about 45%, sorry, about 10%, about 45% have funding in the 10 to 80 mil range. And the other 45 have funding from 1 to 10 mil. And that's fairly typical of early stage neurotech startups. And companies on the right have not disclosed any funding, but they might have received substantial investment, for instance, non-dilutive grant funding. Uh, and that provides funding, by the way, for about 60% of BCI companies. Uh, for many neurotech products, in-house R&D can easily absorb a few million dollars in two to three years of time, assuming that the right expertise can even be obtained. So in the last 15 years uh, that I've spent working with neurotech companies, I found that actually much of this internal R&D builds on or recreates solutions rather that already exist in lab settings, but are not readily accessible to commercial entities. And building on existing neurotech hardware, software, and data platforms with well-validated tech and methods can significantly reduce R&D cost and time to market for companies. And this enables them to focus early capital on rapid iterative product development proving product market fit as early as possible. And this benefit of tech platforms has, by the way, already been proven in other sectors, including life sciences, drug discovery, uh, computing and information tech. Uh, here I've listed current and emerging non-invasive neural interface modalities that are of interest to companies. The most relevant form factors for neuroimaging are head wearables, but those may interface with other modalities and form factors. These are a few of the commercially available EEG systems and platforms. And the important thing to note here is that research grade systems, which are shown on the left, uh, typically have 64 to 128 electrodes, but are big and bulky. And as consumer systems become more wearable, they typically have fewer electrodes, which reduces the information they can extract in their range of applications. Neuroimaging applications like source localization can require 16 to 64 electrodes, so an important milestone for commercial application is wearable lightweight systems with many electrodes. A few years ago, we actually showed feasibility of using high density wearable dry EEG for real time neuroimaging and cognitive monitoring. And I should note that a combination of good hardware design and modern algorithms can mitigate many of the electrical and movement related artifacts that occur in real world settings. With advances in cloud and mobile processing, it's also now possible to run neuroimaging and state decoding pipelines on lightweight mobile platforms, enabling basically anytime, anywhere accessibility. Here, uh, data from an in-ear hearable capturing brain, heart, and movement um, are streamed to the cloud and transformed into measures of relaxation and HRV, and that's finally displayed in a mobile web browser. And these metrics can be sent to any internet-connected device in real time. These technologies are also being deployed in operational environments to quantify brain health and performance. So for instance, in this feasibility study with UND Spaceflight Lab, NTL Group, and NASA, uh, we used EEG to predict task performance and monitor brain changes in wake and sleep in simulated lunar and Martian missions. In addition to EEG, mobile MEG is becoming available with optically pumped magnetometers. And for comparison, I've also included several commercial near-infrared hemodynamic imaging systems. Further miniaturizing, robustifying, and combining these different modalities holds great promise for advancing commercial and clinical applications of neuroimaging. A, there's a common question that comes up in industry applications, and that's how to easily use and combine different commercial hardware sensors. Lab streaming layer is an open source protocol and app ecosystem enabling streaming, synchronization, and recording of multimodal data streams in research and commercial settings. And this is being broadly adopted as a de facto standard with over 100 commercial devices across 22 uh, categories already supported. 
Another common question is how to access and analyze large, diverse neuroimaging and behavioral data sets and produce biomarkers and models of brain function that generalize across individuals, context, interventions, hardware systems, other factors like that. And of equal interest is personalization of models to individuals or subgroups of a larger population. And both can be achieved with standardized methods for data representation, event and context description, and data processing. And this is something that we and others have been working on for some time. I've listed uh, some of our recent papers and abstracts on meta-analysis of EEG activity, which is the process of jointly processing raw neural data from many different studies to characterize variability, identify generalizable neural correlates of cognitive state. Um, and the examples here show common cortical EEG responses to a set of experimental and behavioral events jointly analyzed over hundreds of thousands of different events from 16 different studies at four institutions. Industry standards are essential for analyses of this sort, as well as for interoperability across hardware and software vendors, defining terminology and other factors. Uh, standards build trust across industry, and that's essential for a thriving ecosystem and market. IEEE has recently re uh, released a standards roadmap for BMI that contains a useful survey of ongoing efforts, a number of which are relevant for neuroimaging. And we also have several ANSI standards uh, in development with the Consumer Technology Association. Uh, the report also lists a bunch of tools and repositories for sharing neural data. An open challenge here is standardizing the data formats and access between platforms. And that's being addressed by several initiatives, including bids, but it's an area, uh, a key area for further development. So in addition to hardware and data, software platforms are needed to facilitate processing of data and rapid pipeline development. Um, at Intheon, we're pioneering a middleware software platform that ingests data from numerous different sensor devices and file formats. And then it applies a full stack of data analytics from curation, cleaning and processing through training advanced machine learning models for BCIs or biomarker discovery, all the way through visualization, report generation and such providing the results to all kinds of different end user applications through APIs. Uh, so users just upload or stream their data to our cloud service, deploy a turnkey or custom data processing pipeline, then access the results in real time or offline anywhere on any internet connected device uh, using a web interface. All this can also be done locally as well. So for instance, this uh, is a mo mobile neurofeedback augmented reality app that animates game objects by just subscribing to vigilance measures that are produced by the platform in real time from raw biosensor data. It's doing brain mapping as well. And then uh, we have a new insight service that provides uh, efficient automated data analytics and interactive graphical reports for individual data sets or for entire studies. So this is basically a neuroscience as a service. It's a term that's, that's going around, it's essentially generating methods and results portions of a paper using standardized uh, replicable workflows. And we're working with leading hardware companies like NearX, uh, Near Infrared Company, CGX and others to fully streamline workflows from turning on the hardware through running a protocol to obtaining results, making it much easier to execute this. Um, in this example here, um, this is doing a, a comparative analysis uh, with an intervention, uh, looking at many different brain metrics um, at the level of individual electrodes from EEG, as well as uh, going into the source domain and looking at 3D brain maps. And all of this is generated within like 30 seconds after having collected data all through this cloud interface, um, all auto-generated in a completely automated fashion. Brain connectivity measures, also measures of workload and relaxation over time. As you can see here, heart rate variability, respiration rate, and other measures like that. You can also upload all this kind of data to uh, cloud service, as I mentioned, and then run workflows at scale that essentially produce all the results. You can configure your pipelines as to your desire if you want, but ultimately producing all the results for your paper through these um, standardized processing workflows. So in this example here, this is analyzing 60 subjects um, in a two by two uh, experimental design with a bunch of different neural metrics and machine learning models also. Um, here's one more example, which is just, uh, this is with uh, near, near Sport 2 with Near X. So here we're also processing data from a uh, near infrared system. So these types of technologies and platforms don't have to be modality specific. They can work across different modalities. Here fitting uh, general linear models, looking at hemodynamic responses um, uh, with a, a wearable near infrared imaging system. So that's one of many, many types 
of examples. So in summary, current advances in non-invasive neuroimaging tech have significant utility for commercial and uh, clinical applications. Broader dissemination really requires closing the chasm between academia and industry and thinking about access, uh, accessibility, clinical consumer utility, ethical framework standardization, and sales. Hardware, software, and data platforms are powerful catalysts for access and dissemination, and industry standards are essential in establishing trust, interoperability, and market growth across industry sectors and also with academia. Finally, I just want to note that it's essential that those of us building or investing in these technologies are committed to leaving the world a little better than we found it. And we have to consider stewardship, human sovereignty, ethics as part of our decision-making processes in building the neurotech companies and the products so that they serve humankind. Uh, BrainMind will be holding a multi-stakeholder neuroethics summit at Asilomar in 2022. And I highly recommend looking at their and others' efforts to bridge gaps between academia and industry in the neuroethics space. Uh, if you're interested in any other learning resources, please reach out to me, tim at mpion.io, and I hope this has been useful to you. Thank you.